Hello and welcome back to the worst War Machine channel on the internet. I'm Malorian and this is Malorian Weekly. Now what we're going to be talking about today is rethinking 2D terrain. So what is 2D terrain? Well, 2D terrain is this mouse pad stuff, right? The the flat stuff that you've been seeing everywhere for the last, you know, five years or whatever it's been that this has been really popular all over our tables. There's several companies that make them. You throw them on the table, super easy, thumbs up. Well, what's this other stuff? Well, the, the competitors is the really older things that we used to use like a decade ago, the 3D terrain, right? Stuff like this that, oh, it, it's not flat at all. It's a, it's a whole thing that we got here. So really to kind of set the, the way that this video is going to go is that in the past, you know, like I said, that's the way we did it. 10 years ago, we would just be using all this 3D terrain. And then when 2D terrain came along, I had a video that was just saying like, look, I don't like 3D terrain. 3D terrain has a lot of problems. We should all embrace this 2D terrain and this is the way you should go. So now that I said that, you know, I really feel that things are different now. So then the next stage of this video is gonna be explaining why I think we should be rethinking it. So with that in place of what you should be expecting, let's jump to that first part, which is covering my position from, you know, five years ago or whenever that was. So why did I hate 3D terrain? I mean, look at it. It looks pretty awesome, right? Here's this nice little village. Come on, Brian, what's your problem? Well, there is a lot of problems with this 3D terrain. And note that I had played on this for years and years and years with GW stuff, War Machine stuff, other games, lots of 3D practice. So don't worry, I, I knew this stuff. And <laughs> the very first thing that comes to mind is just the functionality of it, right? How many times did I set up a model on it and then it falls over and breaks? I mean, thank goodness from a lot of you new players that hills are out of the game now, but hills before were awful where you put something on, it tips over, it breaks, or it's like if my fantasy stuff with like trays of hundreds of models, psh, it all like slide off. It was, it was awful it was horrendous or even you know if it wasn't for the sliding thing just the functionality because a lot of times you look at stuff like oh is that supposed to be a water piece because there's some water there or was that supposed to be a wall because there's also a wall on that or is that rubble is that what we're treating that as you know there's a lot of things that are not very clear because hey they were built to be looking nice like a diorama type thing or maybe there was something else with it too where it could be there but then it's just really not functional for trying to work around it. I mean, let alone trying to put a model on it or off it. But if I'm trying to get an exact measurement from one thing to another, and I got this big bulking thing in my way, I, I can't really get a good measurement anymore. Or another thing that came up a lot as well is that you just wouldn't see things there. I mean, people don't remember this because we're playing on little mouse pads now. But in the past, you might totally forget that like, oh man, that model was there. I didn't see it behind that building and now it's going to hit me and well that's a big huge mistake like just visually not seeing models could sometimes spell the end of the game for you so those were the big things there as a player the fact that you know things would fall off them they weren't very functional uh, they were hard to classify sometimes uh, line of sight issues real real serious things to consider as a player uh you know when your models fall over and break and you lose the game because you didn't see something or couldn't measure it correctly what about as a tournament organizer well as a tournament organizer and I, again I, I ran lots of tournaments i had a lot of issues with it because it was really expensive i had spent years and years and years collecting this i don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars i spent on just terrain alone and then there's all the building time the painting time the maintenance you know some so many times you'd end a tournament and be like well let's pull out everything that broke from all this use of either the packing or the playing on the table i have to paint this up again i gotta fix this type of thing again because that's what happens when you have these pieces of terrain they're all bunched together right in a box and being used and models trying to balance on them and stuff like that and falling over on them and then there's the storage of it as well i'd just be having crates and crates and crates sometimes i'd have to do multiple drives going to the the venue and back as i'd have to bring all this terrain and stuff to try and get there as opposed to this stuff here the 2d terrain which was hey 
no models are going to fall off of these. They can be made because of the way they're made. They're extremely clear what they're supposed to be. Very easy to measure over. You're not going to not see what's there. And then from like a tournament organizer, give me a shoe box and I can have enough terrain for 50 players. It's amazing. It's a dream send. And at that time, I told everybody, yeah, get rid of that 3D terrain. Start getting into this 2D terrain. It's amazing. It's the way to go. Now, here we are many years later, and more importantly, right after a pandemic. And all of a sudden, we're rethinking things, or at least here in my area, you know, my group here, my meta, we're rethinking things pretty heavily. And I think the biggest thing that came to this is two different things. One was playing War Table. Now, nothing against War Table. Lars, it's amazing. It was the, the greatest thing they have out there. It's still going to be used if you want to play someone that's not in your meta, right? If I want to play somebody in the States, I'm not going to drive all the way there from Canada. I'm just going to say like, hey, hop on War Table. So War Table is great. But everything is 2D even the models and you know that's one of the things that you have the real appeal from is really seeing that you know here's my awesome blockader one of my favorite models and it's really because you got this monstrous thing with these monstrous fits and a big change there it goes like you can kind of visualize and buy into what's happening on the table because you get to see this model and this model's awesome and it has this great appeal and then when it's on War Table, War Table is great for the competitiveness and making sure how far things are, but it's just a bunch of circles. And there's a lot of people that didn't want to even touch it because that's not why they're playing this game. They're not playing it for all the circles. They played it for the models. They want to have that visual aspect to it. And even though that before, like, sure, the train was flat, but there's still all the models you'd be having there. And really, they're the primary focus. And that was something that really got them into the game. So I think that since we've now had like a year and a half of everyone playing on War Table, it's really cemented the idea that there are certain negatives that come from 2D just from an immersion aspect for like I, I'm no longer feeling that I'm playing this battle of robots versus werewolves it is now my circles versus your circles and that's kind of it so that's I think one big piece of this here Another big part of it, too, that made us rethink this is also coming out of the pandemic, and I'm sure this is all over the place, but seeing our playing group shrink. And this has nothing to do with, like, oh, War Machine's dying, oh, no, it's because Hungerford left, and all oh, power creep. No, it has nothing to do with any excuse or conspiracy you're trying to put to it. It is quite simply the fact that we just went through this pandemic. People couldn't really play against each other in person. Yes, there was war table, but a lot of people didn't want to do it for one reason or another. And during that year and a half, maybe they got into another hobby. Maybe they had money issues and had to sell their models. Maybe they just didn't play for a year and a half. And now they just don't know if they want to get into the game, right? It's no longer a habit hobby for them. They're out of practice. They know that War Machine is a game that's all about knowledge. And now they're like, yeah, what? What? There's a Death Archon? What the hell? What? There's this strange bedfellows? Yeah, no, thank you. I'm so far behind the curve. I know how long it took for me to get to be in a competitive nature. I'm going to go to something else where I can just roll some dice. So every group that I know of is basically at a spot right now of rebuilding, right? All the people like me that are those hardcore lovers of War Machine, of course, we came back, but... For all those people that are on the fringes that, it, you know, a year and a half not playing where it was just what it took to kind of nudge them away, now we have to rebuild this. And when it comes to the question of trying to rebuild your community, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about it. But one of the pieces that's got to be very big is that visual appeal of the game. You know, when you walk by a 40K game, you see all the beautiful models playing on the beautiful terrain, and it's just visually appealing, right? It doesn't matter about the, the power levels or, or anything else. The fact that you look at it is like, wow, that just looks cool. And 
if that's beside something like War Machine, where, you know, the models are, are getting better. They're not, I mean, we all got to admit, right? GW models are just way up there, but GW's is a massive company that has a lot higher budget they could, can put into putting these models. But here we are then with this 2D terrain. And so when you're even setting yourself at that point, we're like, oh, what is this? You're using those models on those mouse pads? I, I'm going to go and play this one over here. And so it's really hard when we're, when we're trying to rebuild this to grab that from that visual aspect. So I think from both those pieces, from the the experienced players starting to see like, oh, this is what the game is like if we turn it to a game of circles to actually actively thinking about, okay, what are we going to do now to try and make sure we really get in new players? There's now this new time where we just really got to be rethinking about is this 2D terrain the way we need to go? Now, the very first option that we'd have to then pose to ourselves is, should we go back to 3D terrain? You know, there's all those bad things I just said about it. Do we really just want to go back to all that? Do you we have to rebuy everything i mean a lot of people got rid of all their 3d stuff and now this is what they have and so if i want to reverse it that's a whole another you know investment i have to be doing like that's just a, a tall order for a lot of people but you know really looking at that option i don't think that's the way we want to go i don't think the idea of going all the way back to 3d terrain is the best one. I mean, if you have it, sure. Okay. And if you have some good ones that you'd have to really look like what ones will mitigate all those negative things I said. So, you know, maybe when you look at them, it's really clear what it is. They're relatively flat and easy to use. And, and, you know, there's, they're not going to be just massive and blocking line of sight. You know, there's, there's things that you can be working around it, you know, stuff like that. If you look at it and find a way to make it work. Okay. Maybe, but on the other hand, there's been another new development in the last five years that I think we could be leaning into as well. And what that is, is 3D printing. It's something I've been really wondering how it's going to be affecting the actual models, right? With models being so expensive, what happens if I just print my own Death Archon? You know, stuff like that. But without getting into the whole legal hullabaloo of like, you know, what's PP going to do if I start printing off all my own Toros and stuff like that? What about terrain? Because terrain, one of my big negatives, and one of the things I just talked about is how expensive it is. 3D printing, on the other hand, can be very cheap and very easy to go about just really going through any catalog, catalog of designs and then saying, yeah, that's the one I want. Let's print it. Uh, depending who you're going through, you might be able to get it printed off just for the cost of the actual material. And then it's not going to be something where like, oh, you want to buy this, this building here from GW? Okay, that's going to be 80 or $100. Now I'll be like, well, okay, that was eight dollars in, in, in material here you go you know like oh you want to be printing off you know like 50 uh, uh walls so that you have all the walls you need forever sure that's 15 bucks you know like a lot of this stuff is extremely affordable and here's the other part too is i feel that these two worlds can work together in a spot where you can have your 2D terrain, which is really easy to have down there, and then have a lot of pieces that are designed to go on top of it. We actually saw some of these things before we all just moved over to 2D terrain, where like say for a forest, you'd have a flat little base and then little holes that were like the trees could go into and then they're removable and that was cool but it still wasn't perfect because there was still that you know like the bumpy surface and models would kind of go on there and then like fall and tilt and it's kind of hard to use sometimes so that was still okay yes but not great but what if i took this 2d terrain printed some 3d trees and then put the trees on it well now i'm having that visual aspect it's not super filling in everything it's not blocking everything and more importantly when i need to should i need it for a critical measurement or you know just it's in the way because i want to put a, a huge base on here well then i just move them all off to the side temporarily that sounds like a fantastic idea and something that's super easy for our community to do. There's so many people in this community that have these bright ideas of how to be doing this 3D terrain. I got a guy in our group that just does this all the time just for 
for fun, right? Like he actually has a job that has nothing to do with graphical design. It's just something he's into. He's like, hey, you know, Malorian, look at this. Like, wow, that's awesome, right? And so what if all these people from the community started working together and saying, hey, here's some stuff, print it off and put it on your 2D terrain and you're good to go. So that's what I think that we should be doing now. I still feel that full 3D terrain for the most part is probably not what we want to do. There's all those negatives I talked about, especially as a tournament organizer. But the idea of having your base as 2D, so it's kind of stopping a lot of things that we said, and then having some very inexpensive 3D elements that you could be putting on top that you can print for extremely cheap. Yeah, that's sounding amazing. Now, I do have to say that I was planning to do this video before and then I was actually then approached by Tom from Trollblood Scrum and he's actually going to be doing this as a Kickstarter. So it was actually like perfect timing for this. Um, I'm going to be having a link down below to this Kickstarter that has this 3D terrain that's actually going to be used to be going on 2D terrain. So that's fantastic. I want you to go down there and look at it, but I'm also going to be doing a spe specific review video on that material. So I'll be doing that too. That'll be the next video that comes out. This one I want to keep as the just the premise of rethinking the idea of 2D terrain. And I think if we look at it from that part, yeah, of course we do. It is a, We're in a spot where we need to rebuild. We are at a spot where we all are appreciating that circles versus circles on this little board of, of nothing is not really having the thing that really drew us to this game in the beginning. And that there's a better way that uses the technology that's come out in the last five years. So there you go. If you agree with it, if you disagree with it, please post it down below. I always like having these conversations. And otherwise... We'll catch you later. Bye.